Good day and welcome to Mission Control Houston. Today is Tuesday, November the 5th, 2013, and this is Space Station Live. Here in the Mission Control Center, the team is being led by Flight Director Scott Stover, uh, and Hal Getzelman is talking with the Expedition 37 crew aboard the International Space Station, making sure that everyone is on the same page for the research and activities, uh, getting ready for the arrival of uh, three new crewmates of Expedition 38 on Thursday, as well as a spacewalk coming up on Saturday. On orbit uh, right now are uh, Kara Nyberg and Mike Hopkins of NASA, along with the commander Fyodor Yershikin and two other Russians, Sergei Rozansky and Oleg Kotov, uh, as well as European Space Agency astronaut uh, Luca Pamatano. Uh, getting ready to head up to the International Space Station this week are uh, Mikhail Turin of uh, the uh, Roscosmos, as well as NASA's Rick Mastracchio and the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency's Koichi Wakata. Today, uh, Mike Hopkins is working on uh, monthly and annual maintenance on the uh, combined operational load-bearing treadmill system known for, uh, short for as Colbert. Uh, this is part of the ISTAR project, which is short for ISS as testbed for analog research, uh, and that's uh, the idea behind that is for crew members to perform procedures without any input from the ground. Uh, this is expected to simulate the effects of long time delays for future long duration missions to uh, asteroids or Mars or other destinations in the solar system where uh, they won't be able to have up to the minute help from mission control. Uh, Hopkins also spent some time today working on the in-space experiment, which studies particle dynamics of fluids that change properties uh, in response to magnetic fields. Karen Nyberg, meanwhile, is performing or getting ready to perform some uh, uh, experiments with the SPHERES uh, experiment, which stands for uh, Synchronized Position, Hold, uh, uh, and uh, The uh, experiment is uh, used to uh, look at how very small bowling ball sized satellites can interact with one another uh, and uh, uh, essentially hold position relative to one another. Yesterday, Mike Hopkins did a lot of work with uh, uh, the Sphere's Rings experiment, which uh, is designed to look at even the potential for doing uh, power transfers without cables using these satellites. Today, uh, Nyberg's use of the experiment is going to work on uh, how uh, human-machine interaction works. Uh, and they're going to be doing analysis of time delays between the space station and the ground uh, and the uh, three and six degrees of freedom operations for the Sears satellites aboard the space station and on the ground, and also using some augmented reality tools to visualize the motions of the satellites as uh, they uh, attempt to follow the crew member. Nyberg also uh, did some remote guide eye exams on Luca Parmitano today, uh, and uh, Parmitano, uh, meanwhile, is working to repair a guiding rail on the Biolab microscope cassette, uh, switching out test samples in the Materials Science Laboratory, and preparing along with Nyberg and uh, your chicken for the departure on Sunday. Your chicken, uh, of course, is uh, packing uh, items away in the Soyuz, uh, along with cargo that's going to be returned to Earth, as well as personal items for the crew members in preparation for their upcoming departure on Sunday. Ola Kotov and Sergei Rozansky are preparing for their Saturday spacewalk, uh, trying on the Orlon spacesuits that they'll wear and performing leak checks and systems checkouts on them. Uh, yesterday, they, mo they moved them into the pier's airlock, which will be their exit and re-entry point for the spacewalk on Saturday. Meanwhile, in Kazakhstan, the Soyuz that will carry Rick Mastrakio, Koichi Wakata, and Mikhail Turin uh, rolled out from the vehicle assembly building to the launch pad uh, for vertical installation on the launch pad. Uh, in addition to uh, viewing the rollout, uh, the crew uh, out in Kazakhstan will have some time to spend with their families and make final preparations for their launch at 10.14 p.m. Central Time. Uh, tomorrow, uh, that is 10.14 a.m. Baikonur time. Here we're seeing a uh, video that was recorded of the rollout earlier today. Uh, 
A lot of activities coming up uh, in support of the Expedition 38 Soyuz launch and docking on NASA television. We'll start our launch coverage at 9.15 p.m. tomorrow, Wednesday, November 6, and expect to launch at 10.14 p.m. Central Time. On Thursday, we'll have uh, Soyuz docking coverage in the wee hours beginning at 3.45 a.m., along with the uh, docking, which is anticipated at 4.31 a.m. Central Time. Our Soyuz hatch opening coverage begins at 6.15 a.m., and the doorway between the Soyuz and the space station expected to uh, swing open at 6.40 a.m. Central. And then we'll have Expedition 38 uh, docking and hatch opening video file uh, at 8 a.m. Central Time on Thursday. Otherwise, all systems uh, working very well aboard the International Space Station in support of uh, continuing research as the space station nears its 15th anniversary of the first element launch, which is coming up in uh, a little bit more than 14 days and 14 hours. This is Mission Control Houston. Station, this is Hans Malone, Space Ground 2 for Karen and Spheres for a voice check. And I'll have to build uh, Station on 2. If you could stand by for one minute. And I actually have a question on InSpace. Are you guys done with that? Can I shut her down? And yes, you have a go uh, to go ahead with part three and four of the conclude activity. And we also are changing out two digital tapes today. Okay, change the two digitals today, and I'm going to go for uh, parts three and four. That's great, copy. I'm still station on two for Spears. This is Mission Control Houston with some live downlink video from uh, on board the International Space Station from inside the uh, Kibo module where Karen Nyberg is getting ready to perform this set of uh, Spears experiments. Spheres stands for Synchronized Position Hold Engage Reorient Experimental Satellites. And Karen, that is correct. We will be working on Space Up 2 for the remainder of the day. Nyberg scheduled to be uh, talking directly with uh, Eric Kathergehagen, who is the principal investigator for this uh, setup of Sphere's experiment work. Uh, of course, all of the uh, research activities are coordinated through the Payload Operations Integration Center in Huntsville, Alabama at the Marshall Space Flight Center there. This is a view of uh, Luca Parmitano as he uh, begins uh, to do some closeout work. And station is on small space to go to Karen. As he is uh, working with the uh, Micromaterial Science Laboratory, uh, he's exchanging used sample cartridges and replacing them with the next sample cartridge. Uh, I assume by reset you, mean, you meant to uh, exit the program and restart. If so, that's affirmative. I did do that.
And Karen, we need you to exit the program and we'll give a call back when to start it back. They need to do some uh, configuring here on the ground. Okay, I will exit. And Huntsville, that's complete. We got it. So session Luke on two while I have you. Go ahead, Luca. Yes, the procedure is complete for chamber leak test. We copy. Thanks. The crew aboard the orbiting outpost uh, woke up as usual at uh, midnight central time now that uh, daylight savings time has uh, uh, gone away and we're back to central standard time. They uh, had a couple hours in the morning for post-sleep activities, getting cleaned up, uh, uh, having breakfast together and uh, doing a quick uh, evaluation of uh, their home uh, away from home in orbit. They did a daily planning conference with the control centers around the world that support the space station activities uh, here in uh, Mission Control Houston, at the uh, Payload Operations Center in Huntsville, at uh, Mission Control in Moscow, as well as uh, uh, the uh, Mission Control Centers for the European Space Agency in, uh, near Munich and uh, the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency Control Center near Scuba, Japan. After that, it was uh, primarily for uh, Fyodor Yershikin uh, uh, packing up the Soyuz, as mentioned earlier, to get ready for the return home, uh, as well as uh, conducting a, uh, an exercise dry run for the uh, lower body negative pressure device to uh, make sure he's ready to uh, undergo those protocols that the Russians use to try and help uh, uh, save offs and get, get ready for the return to one gravity after uh, five and a half months in orbit. Sergei Rosansky and uh, Ola Kotov work with uh, some experiment hardware that uh, will be used to uh, uh, check out their spacesuits. Uh, they'll be used in Saturday's spacewalk. And uh, the uh, Mike Hopkins, Luca Parmentano, and Karen Nyberg uh, started their day primarily with uh, exercise, uh, with the one exception being uh, those uh, uh, remote uh, guided eye exams that uh, Karen Nyberg performed on Luca Parmitano. Uh, eye uh, trouble on orbit has been uh, documented as an issue. Uh, appears to be related to long duration stays in microgravity and sometimes it can uh, 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 become permanent when they return home. And so scientists and doctors are looking at exactly what causes that, uh, whether it's related to the interocular eye pressure or other uh, uh, effects of the human body uh, in the microgravity environment. After their uh, midday meal break, the crew uh, moved uh, smartly into uh, an afternoon of experiment work. and continued uh, packing and departure preparations uh, for Yershika, Nyberg, and Parmitano. Oleg Kotov and Sergei Rozansky uh, will get in some good exercise sessions toward the end of their day as they uh, get their bodies ready for Saturday's uh, exertions outside the International Space Station, which will include a couple of uh, assembly and maintenance tasks, as well as uh, the display of the uh, Olympic torch that is destined to light the uh, flame uh, at the 2014 Winter Olympics Games in Sochi, Russia. 
a uh, closeout for the day will be daily planning conference with all the uh, control centers again that is scheduled to begin about uh, 1 p.m. Central. And then the crew will have a couple hours of pre-sleep activity, have an evening meal together, um, uh, refresh themselves after a busy day of work on orbit and get ready for bed, which uh, has a sleep schedule beginning uh, officially at 3.30 uh, p.m. Central Time. Station for Cairn on Space Ground 2. This is Spheres. Do you copy? Loud and clear. How are you today? Uh, much better. Excellent, Karen. Uh, good to talk with you. Um, looks like you're ready for our test setup today. Yeah, I'm in uh, procedure 2006 at um, step 3.2. I can power on the Spheres at any time. Excellent. Uh, before we get going, I just wanted to quickly congratulate you on a great increment. Um, you've been a rock star up there for us. It's been a lot of fun working with you. Um, I think this may be your last year's session. It probably is. I'm becoming a short timer here. It's been fun working with you guys, too. It's been a lot of fun. We really appreciate it. Um, I'm going to be handing you over to the PI, PD. Um, Elvar, and um, he'll take things over. Sounds good, thank you. We're going to try it on Ivo's then. Karen, this is MIT Alvar on the Space Ground 2. Do you copy me? Very faintly. Okay. Uh, how about now? Much better. Great. I am actually on a landline, and this has working pretty pretty well just now. Uh, we are ready to move forward with a test run. Uh, we're going to put the satellites into 
the, the program for today based on the test plan. And uh, then we'll start doing some interactive operations between both you and us in the ground. That sounds great. Since I'm on a landline, I'm pretty much open mic to you, so I will try to keep it as quiet as possible in the room. Okay, sounds good. Here's on two. I'm uh, about to select the program, and the test plan says 48 alpha. I do not see a 48 alpha. I see a 48 with that interact stella checkout. Is that the one you'd like me to pick? Uh, the test plan should for today should say 50. Let me double check that. Okay, uh, apologies, that is a typo. There, you should have a 50 to SAT Interact Stella Science 1. Okay, copy. Thank you. We're continuing to watch live downlink television from the International Space Station as it orbits 250 miles over the Pacific Ocean, uh, fairly near the vicinity of the Hawaiian Islands on a northeasterly track uh, that will soon have it crossing over the west coast of the United States. Inside the space station, Karen Nyberg uh, continues to work with the synchronized position hold engage reorient experimental satellites, getting ready uh, to set up for an experiment run, talking with principal investigators on the ground. This uh, particular investigation is uh, designed to uh, collect data on how these small bowling ball sized uh, human machine uh, interactions uh, occur uh, as they work to develop uh, more innovative and uh, intuitive user interfaces. This particular set of experiments is looking at uh, how time delays between the ground and the space station due to communication systems affect operations. It's also looking at both three and six degree of freedom operations of the space satellites. Uh, the six degree of freedom only really came possible uh, in microgravity aboard the space station, uh, but three degrees of freedom uh, are being mimicked on the ground uh, and all this being controlled via laptop computer keyboards. The team uh, on the ground is working with the team on the space station to try to control multiple uh, sphere satellites from the ground using a uh, visual user interface tools.
These uh, satellites were developed originally by the Massachusetts uh, Institute of Technology uh, with one of the professors working with his class uh, who uh, issued a challenge to them to try and develop a set of satellites that mimic the uh, practice droids that Luke Skywalker used in Star Wars to practice his lightsaber activities. And those have resulted in uh, a myriad of different uh, permutations of experiments using the Sphere satellites. Yesterday, Mike Hopkins worked with a, a uh, uh, rings uh, configuration in which there were specialized uh, equipment added onto the outside of these Sphere satellites that uh, looked a little bit like uh, a, a bicycle wheel and was actually looking at how the, uh, the system uh, works uh, with resonant inductive near-field generation systems uh, that could eventually lead to the capability to transfer power wirelessly between satellites. Here's a view uh, from yesterday as Mike Hopkins worked with the uh, Sphere's rings experiment. Uh, you can see that uh, bicycle spoke with the Sphere uh, as the hub at the middle. A uh, very interesting set of tests as one of those uh, uh, Sphere satellites remained uh, tethered by bungee cords. You can see co cords that you can see on the left of your screen, uh, and the other one free floated, and uh, there were inter there was interaction uh, commanded between the two satellites. All this uh, eventually is expected to lead to uh, better capabilities for automated uh, rendezvous and station keeping of satellites and spacecraft uh, so that uh, uh, all of the math and, and work that goes into uh, computing those kinds of traje trajectories and things can happen automatically in space rather than having to be pre-programmed or driven by a pilot uh, in orbit. And now back to our live downlink from inside the Kibo Laboratory, uh, the Japan Aerospace Exploration uh, Agency's uh, a large volume, a perfect uh, location for these experiments uh, for the satellites to maneuver on their small carbon dioxide thruster jets. Meanwhile, uh, Mike Hopkins in the uh, Destiny Laboratory module working in the Microscience Gravity Glove Box uh, on an experiment known as InSpace, or investigating the structure of paramagnetic aggregates from colloidal emulsions. And this essentially looks at uh, fluids that can be uh, changed, have their properties changed in response to magnetic fields. It's an experiment that's led by uh, Eric First uh, at the University of Delaware. This uh, is a, a, an experiment of opportunity for Hopkins, uh, who uh, didn't have this activity on his schedule. He's scheduled to be working with uh, an, an annual maintenance for the Combined Operational Load-Bearing Treadmill System, uh, or Colbert, that is used uh, by the astronauts to run and walk in space to keep themselves in good health and to prepare their bodies for the return to one gravity. But he's in between, and uh, it's uh, a self-guided activity that's uh, intended to uh, help prepare for future long-duration exploration missions where uh, uh, communications delays are so long that they don't have immediate interaction between the crew and mission control. And so uh, Hopkins taking opportunity of some downtime in that maintenance activity to do some extra experiment work. Okay, number one, recorder one has 685, and recorder two, 688. And hey, Mike, that was a great comment. Six eight five six eight eight. That's affirmative, and I'm getting ready to start uh, part four. And hey, Mike, here go. Your station on two. Go ahead, Garden. 
Okay, it looks like both spheres are loaded, and I've got the um, uh, good pressure. Great, yes, we see that here too. Let's proceed with a quick checkout. And with real-time data, we see that the blue satellite has a low fuel estimate. So there is a chance that the blue satellite will be out of real fuel in a few minutes, but it should go through quick checkout. So. And Houston Station on two for in space. Go ahead, Hopper on two. Yeah, sorry, Hal. I was actually, I meant to say Huntsville. Okay, you know, we're always here to talk to you, too. And Mike, you can talk to you, too. Huntsville Station on two. I go for. Uh, Step three of uh, part four. And my QR go. Copy, thanks. This is Mission Control Houston. We have a brief loss of signal through the tracking data relay satellite system. Uh, earlier today, Mike Hopkins and Karen Nyberg had an opportunity to talk with the, the Weather Channel's uh, Mike Betts uh, and KSD KTV's Pat McGonigal in Missouri. Let's take this opportunity to uh, replay that event for you. Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? We are ready for the event. The Weather Channel, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is the Weather Channel. How do you hear me? Hello, I have you loud and clear. Welcome to the International Space Station. Karen, if you can hear us, we've got some of the, the tremendous images that you're able to capture from the space station. What piques your curiosity and your imagination most up there? Well, mostly my goal when I got here and when I, you know, the first time I saw the Earth from, outer, from space was on my shuttle flight in 2008. And I just really wanted to try and share that view as much as I could. Um, and also save the memories for myself. And what I've done is tried to use a lens that shows exactly what it looks like to us when we are looking out the window and really grab the colors and the textures and that sort of thing that we see from here. And so, like I said, to save it for myself for the future, when I've maybe forgotten in my mind what it really looks like, I can look at these pictures and then also to share with all the other people in the, in the world that don't get to the opportunity to see that view. You know, Karen, perspective is everything, and when you are way up in orbit and you're looking down and you see things like some of the images you have of, of Hurricane Raymond, what goes, from, what goes through your mind when you're up there? 
It's, it's an interesting question because everything is so beautiful, even the storms. There's one particular image I took of some storms over Ghana, and I have a very good friend from Ghana. And so at the time, I'm looking at it, and you could see the height of the clouds, and it was just so beautiful. But then you realize, and you think about it, and, and having that, that contact or that you know, knowing somebody that is from there just made it made it very special and, and made you think about what really is happening underneath there. And for the hurricane, actually at the time, I hadn't seen the news for a while and I didn't know there was a hurricane in that area. And so after I snapped those pictures of Hurricane Raymond, I went and got online and looked and saw that sure enough, there was a, there was a hurricane. Now, Mike, I want to ask you about your Facebook page. Um, you encourage people to train like astronauts. What does that mean? Well, I think uh, the big thing is for us, physical fitness is a very important part of our day, of our lives up here. Uh, we end up, uh, it's so important that they put it on our schedule for at least a couple hours a day. And that's because there's a lot of negative effects of life in microgravity. We end up losing muscle mass. We end up uh, having our bones get weaker. And so we need to make sure that we're exercising to help counteract that. But that's also important for people on the Earth. And so my goal with, uh, with all of the train like an astronaut or being a part of that was to uh, was to encourage people to get out and, and exercise and stay fit, because uh, because it's very important uh, for life up here and life on Earth. I hate to cut you off in space, but we have a hard break. Mike and Karen, thank you so much for joining us from the space station. Very cool. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the Weather Channel portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from KSDK TV. This is KSDK TV. How do you hear me? And we hear you loud and clear. Welcome to the International Space Station. Okay, it is an honor. Mike, since you're holding the microphone and you're from Missouri, I'll start with you. How's your first mission in space going? It's uh, going absolutely fantastic, better than I could have hoped for so far, and uh, I'm absolutely just uh, enjoying everything about it, and I've got great crewmates up here to spend the time with as well. And in layman's terms, Mike, what are you doing up there? Well, we're actually doing quite a bit. When I first showed up, we had a visiting vehicle show up with uh, supplies for us, and so Karen and Luca had to capture that. And then there was a lot of unloading and reloading uh, some of our trash to put on that. And then we're doing a lot of science. Uh, there's going to be over 200 experiments being performed over the course of the mission. And so a lot of our days are spent executing that science. And then there's normal maintenance. Uh, the station is very much like a house, and things break, and things need uh, routine maintenance. And so we spend a lot of time doing that as well. Okay, Mike, I have two more questions for you, but let me ask Karen a question now. Karen, I read you consulted Sandra Bullock for the movie Gravity. Tell me about that. Actually, that was uh, Katie Coleman, who, actually, who flew uh, here on Space Station a couple years ago. And I believe she actually talked to Sandra Bullock when she was on board. And she gave her some tips on how to move around in space, the kind of effort that it takes to move. And one of the things she had told her was how little effort it takes to move from one wall to the next. And she said that you can use one single strand of hair to do that. And so when Katie told me that, that she had talked to Sandra Bullock about that, I decided to try it and actually uh, made a video demonstrating just what little effort is required to move around without gravity. Oh, I see. Forgive me. I'm sorry about that, Karen. Karen, could you talk about this Olympic torch thing? Everyone keeps asking me, how will the torch stay lit in space? Actually, that's a good question. I honestly don't know. I have not personally seen the torch yet. We'll see it here in a couple days. I think it's pretty exciting, though, because I think what, it, what the International Space Station is showing is tremendous international cooperation that is very similar to what we see in the Olympics. It's just... Um, people getting along, competing in a very friendly way. We built this International Space Station. It's pretty remarkable what we were able to do on an international level. And Mike, my next question's for you. 
Mike and Karen, we're all so proud of both of you, but Mike, you're from Missouri. What would you say to a young boy or a girl who would like to be an astronaut? What's the one thing they would need to do? Well, first of all, uh, anything's possible, certainly, and uh, the thing that anybody needs to do is find something that they love, that they're passionate about, and you follow that, and uh, if things are going to work out with uh, being an astronaut, then they'll work out, but if they don't, you still have something that you're doing that, uh, that you absolutely are passionate about. And if you had to pick one thing, Mike, I know your folks are still here in Missouri, what thing do you really miss about Missouri? What something people down here would love to hear. You know what? It is the people that I miss the most about Missouri. There's something special about uh, about everyone there. Uh, I came from a small town in Missouri, and everyone's just so friendly. It's such a tight community, and uh, and so you know you miss you miss that piece up here. We're a very small community as well up here, uh, but we also have our ground teams. Uh, but uh, I certainly I certainly miss uh, the folks in Missouri. Mike, you're not going to believe this. This isn't my first time seeing you. I was at a U of I Southern Illinois football game in 1990 when you beat the Salukis 56 to 21. Little did I know, looking down on the field, one of the defensive backs for the Illini would be floating in space. This is pretty heady stuff. Yeah, that was. Uh, those were some great times uh, back at the University of Illinois playing football. In fact, that was a big day for Howard Griffith as well. He uh, he set the NCAA record for touchdowns in a single game that game. I remember. I saw him at CAMS later that night, but I'm sure you weren't at CAMS. You were probably studying or something. Um, listen, you guys, I know your time's valuable. Absolutely. You're, we're so proud of both of you. Hey, just for a special favor, could we, could I ask both of you guys to just hold out your hand, showing all five fingers, and then holding up your index finger? It's like our station thing, 5-1, if you wouldn't mind. Oh, this is okay. <laughs> that is great. That is great. Well, God bless you guys. I know, Mike, you come back in March, I believe, and Karen, I, I'm not sure about when your mission ends, but God bless you. This has been a real honor to talk to you today. Well, thank you very much. Uh, certainly enjoyed talking to you, and also uh, it's great to, to hear from Missouri. And that ends our replay of uh, this morning's interview with uh, the Weather Channel and KSDK-TV in uh, Missouri, St. Louis. A reminder that uh, you can connect uh, yourself with the astronauts aboard the International Space Station through social media. Uh, a lot of those photographs that Karen Nyberg were talking about were posted on her Twitter feed. Uh, we'll show you here her, the, uh, the way to follow them uh, for Karen. It's uh, at Astro Karen N. Uh, and she'll be continuing to uh, share her thoughts uh, about the remainder of her five and a half month expedition. And we hope also to uh, have her continued uh, tweets going on once she gets back home uh, to planet Earth. Uh, Mike Hopkins also has a Twitter account, and uh, he is uh, available to be followed at, at Astro Illini. Of course, uh, he went to the University of Illinois, and that's uh, the moniker there. He's also involved in uh, Train Like an Astronaut uh, as he tries to encourage fitness. He's a really big fitness uh, advocate, uh, and his background shows that as a football player. Uh, you can follow him at uh, twitter.com slash train astronaut and get additional information about Mission X, the Train Lock and Astronaut Project at trainlockandastronaut.org. For the blue satellite. The International Space Station just completed a pass over uh, North America, moving from uh, west to uh, northeast uh, from uh, the Southern California coast, heading out over the northern portion of the Great Lakes, and uh, then uh, out over Labrador and uh, our uh, International Space Station Canadian uh, Space Agency partners, before uh, now heading out uh, 250 statute miles above the Atlantic Ocean. Some uh, beautiful views of the Atlantic uh, from the external cameras uh, show here on the International Space Station. 
Uh, yes, uh, is it trying Meanwhile, uh, Karen Nyberg continues to talk with principal investigators from inside the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency's Kibo Laboratory of the space station, that large volume, uh, the uh, test bed for the SPHERES experiment, uh, this particular experiment looking at uh, some uh, human-machine interaction and the ability to uh, work uh, with uh, uh, new control systems that will allow satellites uh, to uh, position themselves relative to one another. Okay. You can find out more about the crew's activities and the scientific research that's going on in the International Space Station by going to www.nasa.gov slash station. There's a menu on the left that has uh, a, a set of uh, uh, quick connects to take you to research and crews and expeditions and other information about the International Space Station. And if you want to go directly to the research, it's www.nasa.gov slash station slash research. Okay, Karen, and we're going to try this again, just a little bit slower. So you should see some motion, but a little bit. Uh, okay, no. Slow down. Uh, don't do anything. Uh, oh, sorry, Karen, I, I'm on the phone, so it's kind of hard to talk both to Grant and to, the, uh, to you. I think what's happening right now is that it's remembering the commands from the last run. So if you can grab blue, since it's going really far away, we're going to have to try this one again. Do you want to stop and start over or take it from here? Uh, I think we're going to start the test over because the satellite still seems to be getting commands, even though we're not issuing them. So we'll be debugging here for a second, but you can start. I, actually, if you can reset the satellites, that might reset the queue and then deploy again. Thank you, Karen. Astronaut Karen Nyberg inside the uh, Hope or Kibo Laboratory of the International Space Station setting up for one of uh, 13 different tasks in this uh, SPHERES experiment run. And uh, Karen, uh, just let the satellites be for a little bit. We're going to restart one of our GUIs in the ground. But they should be okay like they are right now. 
Nyberg yeah, getting uh, the word from the principal investigator uh, working on this experiment that they're going to reset one of their graphic user interfaces. These tests are uh, partially involved with uh, controlling multiple satellites from the ground using that graphical user interface and the visualization, visualization tools. Some of these use uh, what's discussed as augmented reality to help folks on the ground visualize motion of the satellites in 3D. Since it's a little hard for humans uh, who are used to gravity being present all the time to understand exactly how things uh, work in microgravity. Okay, Karen, our GUI is back up. We're going to try to move the blue satellite towards overhead and see if that wants to work. Again, these uh, small satellites use uh, carbon dioxide thrusters to maneuver, and we can see the blue satellite uh, responding to the interface commands on the ground. The uh, station crew has set up uh, beacons inside this uh, Kibo laboratory to relay those commands. Okay. Uh, we're still going to try to drive it a little bit. It should be slowing down. Let us know if you see it come back down. Heading back down. Thank you. A little bit of overshoot in the remote control. Okay, now we're going to slowly try to move around a circle, uh, sorry, on a circle around red. I think you remember doing okay. this yourself a couple of weeks ago. That's right. Uh, it was harder for us to start doing this, but hopefully we're getting it right. 
This is Mission Control Houston. We're continuing to watch uh, activities with the uh, spheres experiment. It took you 69 key presses to do the circle. I think it took you 69 key presses just to go to starting position. Wow, interesting. Principal investigators on the ground comparing the amount of work it takes for them to do these uh, maneuvers as the blue satellite moves around the red satellite uh, uh, on the ground using the graphic user interface uh, compared to uh, what the crew members uh, were able to do on orbit. Again, SPHERE stands for Synchronized Position Hold, Engage, Reorient Experimental Satellites, and they're being used in a various, uh, in a wide variety of uh, experiments that will teach us more about how satellites uh, can maneuver uh, uh, relative to one another, uh, either autonomously or with uh, ground controls or with in-person controls, and also testing new technologies such as power transfer mechanisms that don't require any wires. As uh, we get ready for uh, the return of uh, Fyodor Yershikin, Luca Parmitano, and Karen Nyberg uh, uh, later, uh, or later this weekend, we're also looking forward to the launch of three more astronauts to the International Space Station. We have our live re recorded report from uh, the launch pad at Baikonur Cosmodrome from our uh, Public Affairs colleague Rob Navius. Let's uh, hear what Rob has to say about preparations leading up to tomorrow's launch. Here at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, we're about 2,000 kilometers away from Sochi, Russia, where the Winter Olympics will be staged next February. But a piece of those Olympics will be aboard the Soyuz TMA-11M spacecraft when it launches Thursday to the International Space Station, that being the Olympic torch, which has drawn so much interest and so many VIPs and members of the media for that liftoff. The vehicle was moved to its launch pad at sunrise this morning and was hoisted vertically off of its rail car. Now technicians are hooking up fuel lines and electrical lines in the final hours of preparation for that launch. That's it from here at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. Now back to you at Mission Control in Houston. And a very busy uh, end of the week as we get ready for the launch of uh, uh, Rick Mastrakio of NASA, Mikhail Turin of the Russian Federal Space Agency, and Koichi Wakata of the uh, Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. We'll have a full video file uh, replay of the Soyuz rocket rollout in Kazakhstan coming up on our video file at 11 a.m. Central, noon Eastern. Also uh, looking forward to the rest of the week's coverage. We have not only a launch, but also uh, a uh, crew joint news conference and uh, a spacewalk to cover this weekend. Starting off with our launch coverage, uh, that's uh, Wednesday Central Time. Uh, we'll have launch coverage beginning on NASA TV at 9.15 p.m. and Soyuz launch at 10.14. Uh, Soyuz docking coverage begins at 3.45 with docking at 4.31 a.m. We'll follow that up with a Friday joint crew news conference uh, that will be on NASA television at 7.50 a.m. Central Time, Friday, 8.50 a.m. Eastern. With that, we'll send you off to NASA headquarters in today's video file. We'll be back at 10 a.m. Central Time tomorrow for more Space Station Live. This is Mission Control Houston.